I'm gonna skip the hey yo what's up guys it's your boy Tinyon scene one this time so uh, yeah so anyways before we get started I would like to talk a little bit about the actual episode itself so there this is something which I just wrote for this so uh, you know just some points and stuff so we got a cont we got the main art content so what we're supposed to cover is the muzzle flash uh, itself so we started sort of adding that flashing effect at the end of the weapon and we're gonna cover the shoot sound effect you know something which um, just just a basic thing just to kind of feel like we're actually shooting I don't have a really good sound effect for that so you're welcome to use your own uh, we're gonna do we're gonna pretty much uh, cover the reloading itself basically which includes uh, reloading automatically and execute ex executing the reload animation and obviously the bullets refilling them and based on that how to deduct them you know creating our own equation of some sorts so we know that yeah this is this is where it goes, how many bullets we need, you know, just the basic stuff. And we're gonna pretty much prevent the player from shooting once the bullets hit the zero mark. So basically, once we no longer have any bullets in our magazine, we do not want to shoot. We, we don't want, you know, to deduct the bullets or we don't want to play the uh, shooting animation any longer. And the weapon sway itself is just a bonus or more like optional. So if we have some time, for, uh, you know, if you have some time to, uh, left, then we're gonna cover this, or we're not gonna cover it, you know, just, it's just optional. I might make a separate video for it, like, a two, three minutes long at max, and I'll just pretty much cover it, because it's not that hard, it's pretty basic, actually. So, yeah, anyways, so, let's get started. Anyways, so here we are, and I'm gonna just open up Unity, and uh, yeah, we're just uh, the same old project where we have a weapon and uh, yeah, all, the, all that kind of stuff, and nothing much, nothing too special. So anyhow, let's. Uh, the, the first thing I'm gonna pretty much do is, oh my god, the hand is horrible. Uh, I'm gonna do is go to Edit, and I'm gonna go to Project Settings, and uh, Player. So uh, when you go there, you're gonna see that there's something, uh, you know, under, or about basically in the Inspector view under the other settings tab you can see that there's something called color space under rendering and that color space is set to gamma gamma by default and we're gonna change this to linear basically linear is like something which well as it says color space and it's uh you know things which are which seem truly bright here and the colors uh, they would pretty much change they would take like a 360 turn in this particular color space so let's change it to linear and there we go. So uh, you can see the, the the colors look a lot more natural, a lot more smooth, soft. As you can see, there's no weird extra white stuff on on, on his hand. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, basically that looks a lot better. Anyways, let's uh, get uh, let's get started with the muzzle flash though. So um, I have imported the uh, particle systems, which you can find in your standard assets. So going to assets, import package, uh, particle systems. And uh, here in the standard assets folder, you can see that there's a new folder called particle systems. Ta. Okay. And we go. To, we can go to the prefabs inside of it, and there we are gonna use the flare uh, particle system for the muzzle flash itself. So let's drag and drop in there. And you can see it comes with a lot of unnecessary particles, which we do not want to use when it comes to, uh, you know. Uh, muzzle flash. So we're gonna pretty much, you know, go to the hierarchy and pretty much delete all the child objects of this, and just select the flare. And you know, what one thing I like to do is actually I like to, um, you know, select the flare, go to the inspector view, the particle system uh, component, and where it says render at the bottom, I'm gonna just pretty much select the uh, material and I'm gonna change this to a different material, so something like this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's horrible. So yeah, uh, you can see it's it's different, it's horrible, and it's different. So yeah, we can maybe randomize the rotation as well, if you want. Because uh, I have no idea, does it even randomize the rotation? Uh, randomize rotation, uh, I have no clue, I have no clue, but... Uh, oh yeah, that's better. Maybe we can, uh, no, that's, that's just a start rotation, too bad. But uh, anyways... So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna change its size first of all. So I'm gonna go to the start size and just gonna adjust it to 0 0.08, let's say. 
And the max size, this is like the minimum size and the max maximum size. What is this? Just up to like 0.1 or something? That's too less. 0.2. Yeah, that looks good. That gives us a nice, uh, you know, muzzle flashy effect, which is not exactly too good, but yeah, it's okay. It's manageable. So let's move this muzzle flash and let's make it make it apparent of the actual weapons mesh. So I'm gonna select the weapon mesh. There we go. And I'm gonna drag and drop the uh, flare in there. Oh, before I do so, I'm gonna actually move it to the shoot point and just zero it out so it's easier to position, you know, just some basic hacks. And then I'm gonna move this to the AK-47 special itself. And there we go. Now, obviously, it's not too good. The flare, it looks horrible. But uh, you can just see it kind of does gives us the nice effect. Maybe we can reduce the size even more. You know, usually, or well, um, in, in real life, the flare is kind of different. It, it kind of goes straight. So it gives us a really different and nice effect. Unlike this, obviously. So yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, let's go to our script and actually input something so we can use the muzzle flash. To so to use the muzzle flash, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, public variable, which is going to be, uh, which you know, the type of it is going to be basically a particle system. So public particle system, and I'm going to call this uh, muzzle flash as as you know obvious as it is. My bad. I'm just gonna say uh, muzzle flash. <laughs> I don't know. And we're gonna pretty much go to where we fire, and we're gonna, you know, where we play the animation. Just underneath it, I wanna, I want the muzzle flash to actually sh be, sh be shown and all. So yeah, I'm gonna say muzzle flash dot play. Oh, and one ultra like uh. uh alteration I did with my code as you might see here we did not cover this in the last uh, video I'm gonna explain this in a second so yeah this is basically what I what I meant by stop shooting when bullets hit the zero mark so yeah you can, you're welcome to copy or I can wait till I explain but anyways so uh, if you kind of go back and uh, here we are I'm gonna select our weapon uh, sorry the uh, the topmost and we're gonna we're gonna pretty much give the flare to this, assign the flare to the muzzle flash. And before we uh, kind of get into the play mode and, and start testing, we want to go to the flare. You want to make sure it's not looping, and you want to reduce reduce the uh, duration to perhaps 0 0.2 or something, or 0 0.1 maybe. So it's just there for a split second, and we can just pretty much see it, maybe 0.15. Yeah. So let's let's kind of try. I'm gonna save the scene. Let's try playing it and see how it goes. Okay. You see, you, you saw the muzzle flash at the start. Let's fix that first of all. So make sure that the flare, uh, you know, where it says "play and awake," that's turned off. Let's try playing it again. There we go. We can see a nice flare, and uh, it's not too nice, but it works. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. I think. I think it looks nice. Does it look nice? Oh, and it's no longer shooting because, you know, that, because of that piece of code. So, you know, before I actually move on to uh, the sound effect, I think I'm going to explain this. Because uh, this uh, the, the content wasn't exactly in sequence, so. So, um, here what I'm doing is, you know, it says, you know, they basically this this one line, it, it defined that, and basically once the, the time counter, which is the fire timer, reached the fire rate, so basically the little delay between each shot, which was of... You know, which we can set, which which is initially of 0.1 seconds. So so after every 0.1 seconds, we're allowed to fire. If it has not reached that 1.1 seconds mark, then we cannot fire. Basically, this is what this means. We're going to return. We're not going to play the function. Okay. This is basically another statement which says that if our bullets are less than or are equals to zero, we cannot fire. We're gonna not play this function. We're gonna go out of this function, we're gonna cancel, we're gonna say, no player, you cannot play this function. This is not allowed. You shall not pass. Okay, okay, gentlemen, composure, my bad. Anyways, so, uh, basically, this is what's going on here, and if if you don't if you want me, then I can I can rewrite it. Sh should I rewrite? It? No, no, no need. Just and this this two these two lines I don't, I don't know what they're called to be honest. <laughs> and these are basically um, you can say you can interpret or read them as or 
basically we're saying if this if this or this okay so if this is the case or this is the case okay if any of those two are true then we're gonna return we're not gonna play this we're gonna just cancel out of the function we're gonna back away nope backing off oh 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 anyhow too many memes so let's um kind of you know well you're, you're welcome to test <laughs> i'm not gonna test it but so let's move on to the actual shooting system so we have not the shooting system shoot effect shoot sound effect I actually have a sound effect imported already <laughs> and actually give me a second i'm gonna just uh i'll, I'll be right back all right so uh let's get back uh to the shoot sound effect and all so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first of all you know dashly pick up some variables uh, for, for the sound effect and all so i'm gonna just uh, go down here you might see my variables are just roaming everywhere i have no clue how to manage them i'm sorry <laughs> but anyways we're gonna create uh, okay first of all let's create a variable there so we're gonna create a new variable called private audio source and just gonna call this audio source as a uh, obviously status and also it's a uh, good uh, practice to actually add underscore uh, you know with the, all the private variables so it's kind of easier to what you can say uh, find them you can say or locate them in your code and makes things a bit easier so you know that yes this is private this is not private and I, th I think I'm gonna do it you know just for the sake of it honestly I don't want to do it <laughs> but I, I guess that's okay so anyways uh, then what we can do is we're gonna create another variable which we're gonna call, uh, which is gonna be a public public uh, audio clip, and we're gonna call this uh, shoot sound. Uh, yeah, shoot sound. Let's just say. Uh, I don't, no, no need for comments. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, the muzzle flash is pretty self-explanatory as well. I don't know why I, I added a comment. After so let's uh, kind of go. Uh, I don't know, let's go uh, underneath the fire function. Oh, and I might, and you might have noticed that I actually do not have the fire. I've, I've pretty much commented this line out as well. Uh, I'm really sorry, I, I actually uh, skipped through a lot of these things. But uh, basically, what we're doing is we're actually di directly jumping to the fire uh, state in the animator. So there's no need to pretty much reset this. So if I go back to the animator, you see, I, don't know, I do not have a fire uh, parameter any longer. I do not have, you know, a uh, transition which goes from idle to fire. I just deleted it. We no longer need it. We just need a transition which goes from fire to idle. That's it. Because we're pretty much jumping to the fire state directly from code where it says crossfade in fixed time. So, yeah. Just for the sake of cleaning up things, I've pretty much moved, uh, pretty much removed the fire and, and removed the transition. Okay, because it was, you know, it didn't meant anything to start with. I'm sorry. Sorry, fire. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function underneath this. We're going to call it private void uh, play shoot sound effect. No, it's still going to be too long. Play shoot sound. That's okay. And uh, and um, we're we're going to pretty much actually go to the, go back to the start, I'm going to say. Okay, so we want to assign this audio source uh you know, variable first of all. So I'm gonna say, all right, audio source. This will be attached to each and every individual weapon, which whichever object has the weapon script attached. So we're gonna say get component, audio source, that's that. And underneath here, we're gonna pretty much say that audio source dot clip equals shoot sound. Uh, not, not point, oh my God, <laughs> shoot sound. And we're gonna say okay. So what we're doing is okay. Let's let's first of all move on. And we can, all right. So what we're doing is we're basically saying okay, the audio source component, which we're gonna just add in a second to the object itself. We're changing its default clip or whatever clip it has assigned to the shoot sound effect to the shoot sound clip which we have here. And then we're gonna we're pretty much playing that clip at once. That's that. And uh, to wrap things up for the sound. We're gonna pretty much play execute this function right underneath the muzzle flash. Bang! There we go. And uh, yeah. So let's go back to the editor and uh, test it out. So uh, I'm gonna go back to my scene. I'm gonna select my weapon, and first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and add a component. And basically, we're gonna add an audio source component. 
and that's that. So an audio source component, which is right there. Uh, I mean, you don't really have to move it. It doesn't matter if it's there or there. You can move it up there if you want to, but yeah. I don't know, you probably can't though. I mean, I can pretty much move this down there, I guess. But never mind. Anyways. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to edit the settings at all. Uh, just you can edit this if you want, which kind of, uh, you know, tells you if the sound is coming from your back or from your front or left or right. You know, that uh, surround effect and all. But anyways, um, so uh, we've got an audio source and I'm going to just pretty much hide it by clicking on it, just for the sake of it. And we're going to go back to our editor, or actually, sorry, uh, I'm going to assign a sound, uh, sound, shoot sound, sorry. So we're going to select AK-47 shoot, which uh, I will be, you know, in, in, in the description, probably the link to that. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably. So let's try playing it and see if that works. So, oh yeah, it works. The sound is horrible, it's truly horrible, so you cannot, like, uh, what it can say, uh, so you, you can say it doesn't loops properly, so if I turn down the fire rate, yeah, it's cutting a lot. So you're welcome to use, uh, you know, any sound effect which you think is better, so as you can see, my current bullets, are, I have reached 4, and bang, they're, they reach 0, and I no longer can shoot anymore, so if I pretty much go, yeah, I don't have to do the pew 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 sound effect any longer, but anyways, um, that's that. So we have uh, the muzzle flash covered, we have the shoot sound effect covered, we have uh, the stop shooting when bullets hit zero mark covered, and just the two other, uh, you can say, things left for us. So move on to the reloading, actually. Uh, well, So, uh, for reloading, let's go back to our code, and I'm going to just say, uh, play the shooting sound effect. Show... Muzzle flash, I don't know, something like that. Um, deduct the bullets. Or deduct, uh, I don't know, one bullet or something. But, anyways, so we're gonna pretty much go and we're gonna create a new function which we're gonna call reload basically. So, private void reload. And now, there are actually a lot of ways of doing this. But you know, just for the sake of keeping it short, maybe I can show you the other way as well, but yeah, let's see. So in the reload function, what we're going to do is we're going to basically say, okay, so we want to reload. Say, uh, basically, you know, whatever happened and we somehow have gotten to this function, we want to reload. So what do, what do we want to check first? First, we want to check if we have enough bullets left. So if we have no bullets left at all, we do not want to play the reload function at all. So we're going to say, if bullets left which is basically all the bullets we have maximum all the bullets we have other than the bullets which are inside of the magazine okay if bullets left is greater uh, sorry less than or equals to zero then return <clears throat> and basically if we don't have any bullets we are not gonna play this function okay let's go back uh, let's go down okay so then we're gonna say all right so we don't we, we have the bullets say we, we, we have the bullets well uh, we want to reload so I'm gonna create a couple integers to kind of make our formula or equation for this one. So integer, I'm gonna create integer type first of all, and then call this bullets to load. So how many bullets we like need to load to fulfill our magazine, basically. Say if we, our magazine consists of 30 bullets, and uh, we have, uh, say, uh, five bullets in our magazine currently, okay? The max it can hold is 30. So how many do we need to fulfill it? We need 25, so 30 minus 5, 20, uh, 25. So I'm gonna say, okay, bullets per mag minus current bullets, which is 30 minus five, whatever bullets we have currently in our magazine, basically. And that's, that is how many bullets we need to load. Okay, so moving on. We're gonna create another integer, which we're gonna call bullets to deduct. This is gonna be the bullets which we actually are gonna take away from the bullets left variable when we're reloading. So we're gonna say, okay, bullets to deduct. Okay, now we're gonna say, we're gonna use something called a smart if statement. Basically, a smart if statement is something which has an if and an else both in a single statement. Okay, I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna use brackets just so it's more easier, clear to, to pretty much, you know, I don't know, teach you and all. So, all right, bullets deduct equals two. So, we're gonna say if bullets 
left is greater than or equals to bullets to load. <clears throat> so basically, if you have uh, you know more bullets or our bullets or bullets left is equal to the bullets to load, okay? Then this is this is basically this, this question mark basically stands for then. This is the if statement. This is the then statement, or basically something which you put inside of the calibrate, in, uh, you know, in the if statement basically. And um, you know, okay, then what we're gonna say we're gonna say bullets to load. So the bullets to deduct will be equals to bullets to load if this condition is true. If we have more bullets than we, uh, you know, more or equals to than we need to load actually. Else it will be equals to bullets left. Say, uh, you know, we need 25 bullets to load our magazine, so we need 25, okay? And we only have five bullets left, basically. Then we do not want it, we do not want to load or we do not want to add f in 25 more bullets. We actually want to add like, a, you know, the bullets which we currently have left. So that's how it's gonna work, okay? So then I'm gonna pretty much go down. I'm gonna say, okay, we got our, all our calculations done. We're gonna do, now we're gonna actually apply them to the variable, so. Bullets left minus equals to bullets to deduct. So we're gonna take away the bullets from you know, whichever bullets we have in our pockets or some stuff like that, if you got those, <laughs> I don't know. And we're gonna put those in inside of current bullets. So current bullets plus equals to bullets to deduct. We're gonna take those away, we're gonna put those, put those in there. And yeah, so this is the smart if statement, if statement. The you know first condition of it's Ill, if the else condition of if basically so something to kind of keep you reminded or to kind of uh, make things easier I don't know we can pretty much say uh, if and then uh, then well basically yeah then and I want to say this is then statement uh, first else second. Something like that, okay, you just so you can, you can you can pretty much understand what I'm trying to get at. I don't know if that's really a proper explanation, but yeah. So smart if statements, statements are really useful. You can actually add a lot of f, uh, else, or uh, sorry, oh my god, not. Okay, you can actually add a lot of if or else statements all together when it comes to smart if statements. So do try to use them if you want. Don't try to use them everywhere because if you have a really complex code, you most likely don't want to use them in, in, in place of a lot of else if else ifs and stuff like that so yeah pretty useful though pretty um, interesting as well you can pretty much add a simple if statement here as well oh, yeah yeah so anyways let's kind of go and actually play the reload okay so uh, on our update function we want to be able to shoot or pretty much fire uh, let me okay you want to be able to fire basically uh, okay right never mind <laughs> so we want to be able to basically fire whenever we press the fire button obviously but we press the fire button we fire that's okay and all but we do not want to fire if we do not have any bullets to fire so we're going to say if current bullets is greater than zero then we want to fire else we want to reload automatically so we're pressing the left mouse button and we have more bullets than zero we're going to fire else we're gonna go to reload and we're gonna pretty much reload all the bullets and all the stuff we have here so that's that let's go back to our unity uh, editor and let's see if that works so let's uh, try getting a shot so I've got 30 uh, okay let's let me tone down my current bullets to five say one two three four five there okay no that worked <laughs> I'm sorry that actually deducted 30 bullets let me go back to the code so let's go back to the code and let's see what we're doing wrong so, um, oh, never mind. <laughs> now nah, we're we're not doing anything wrong. All right. It's all good. So you know we the bullets which which we need to fulfill our mag magazine is basically thirty. The bullets which we currently have in our pockets or you know stored whatever are two hundred, and the bullets which we have inside of our magazine, our current weapon, are thirty. So let's say we need fifteen bullets, and we have like f uh, five bullets left. Okay, so what if I shoot? And we, and we have like total bullets around like 50. Okay. So I shoot one, two, three. There we go. It deducts 15 from the bullets left. But what if we have five bullets left and we want to load 15 bullets? Let's try shooting and see if that works. 
there we go. So it loaded five bullets afterwards. If you might have seen that little thingy, you know, it popped up, okay? So it loaded five bullets instead of uh, 15 bullets all together instead. So yeah, I don't know if you're getting what I mean, but yeah, this is basically all the Call of Duty and battle for this stuff. So yeah, or type of reloading, so. Pretty basic stuff. Sorry guys, I had to uh, cut the video short because it uh, dragged on for too long. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and uh, learned something and I will be uploading the next part shortly. So stay tuned for that. Until then, 